All right, guys, how y'all doing? I'm going to be covering Cora in this video. It may take some time because, again, she is uh, she's a very unique CC Warframe that has some damage output and synergy when it comes to her abilities. She has four abilities just like any other Warframe. All right. She has the Whip Claw, she has the Ensnare, she has Venari, which is also her passive, and she also has um, Strangle Dome. Now, I'm going to break it down piece by piece because a number of people have been asking me how do I build my core, how do I use hers, etc, etc, etc. Whip Claw technically is her first ability that sends enemies reeling with a deafening whip crack. The range is at 17.5 with a radius of 5 meters, and I actually have the damage, actually not 17.5, that's basically off of the mods. Range is 10 meters, 5 meters with damage of 300. I'm not going to get into the whole thing as far as with um, Exalted Whip and all that stuff. I already made my comments about that. Most people agree with what I said. I'm just stating and talking about Core in her current state as she is right now. So I'm just going to leave that there. Her second ability, Ensnare. Bind the hapless target in living metal, entangling others who stray too close. Whipclaw will refresh the trap, allowing it to capture more enemies. It has a 30 meter range, radius of 6, duration of 15 seconds with a propagation delay of 1 second. Alright, so that's what Ensnare does. Fenari, which is her, um, which is her cat, that will always be with her. You can't you cannot use Venari with any other Warframe other than Core because it is her cat. Commands Venari on focus on a target. Hold to cycle between attack, protect, and heal postures. If Venari is killed, use this ability to revive her instantly. She also has respawn time of 45 seconds, a speed multiplier of 1.15. You can enhance that by uh, power strength, as you can see. The health per second as far as with the regen on her heal is affected by power strength as you can see from 50 to 65 with the mods I have on and the snare damage is affected by power strength. Now Strangle Dome technically weaves a, a, weaves a dome of living chain that ensnares and strangles any enemy within any and, and any foolish enough to approach. All right, foes outside the trap will hasten their comrades' deaths by shooting them. Crack whip claw on the dome to further. Oh God, I'm waiting for this thing to come down. Further damage any trapped enemies. That's technically what that does. So I'm just gonna pretty much show you how her abilities actually are. Now, normally when you do whip claw, you just do this. All right, that's technically her first ability, Whip Claw. If I if there was an enemy right there, I would do the whole ensnare action. So I'm just gonna do that right here, right quick. I'm gonna have. Actually, let me take that dude off. I'm gonna have four of these guys. Okay. Now with ensnare, you grab one. And the rest comes in, as you can see right there. I could do that and refresh it. And as you can see, they'll still be ensnared. And then you do whip claw on them, it's synergizing and it will do more damage. As you can see. So as you can see, they come right off. I could whip claw on him, bring them together. That's technically how um, ensnare works. And I can just whip them just like so. Whip them like so, like so. All right. Now I forgot to mention this. Whip claw um, is affected by your melee mods. So that's something you have to be, you have to be aware of. So it's not just by using whip claw, so on and so forth. It's pretty much off of the melee that you are wielding. Normally, you could just have dual carries or any weapon. That is actually good as far as with the reach on it, the damage output it deals out because, again, it's affected by your melee mods. So I'm just going to, for the sake of this, have my dual carries out so I could be doing damage, so on and so forth. 
Now, since you see how ensnare works, I'm going to be using Venari just to show you how she is. I could just go like this and switch her on the fly as to what she does. When she attacks, she does what it says. She attacks the enemy. All right. So I'm going to simulate these guys. And Venari, hopefully she doesn't get killed. So Venari. Oh, Christ. Where is she? Oh, there she goes. So as you can see, Venari, as you can see, is going in over there. But again, Venari is going to die. <laughs> At some point, she's going to die. So as you can see, she does the snare and whatnot. Now she's really dead. And I could bring her back just like that. And then she will continue to try and wreck face. But these are level 145, 155 corrupted bombards. As you can see, she's trying to wreck face on this dude. As you can see, the slash proc is on him. She'll try and do her best. So that's technically Venari in a nutshell. She will just attack. Keep attacking, attacking, attacking. All right. Now, protect, however, I pretty much will have her in that posture where she will disarm enemies pretty much on her tail whip, as you can see. Now, I could bring her back just like so. And if she tail whips somebody just like that, she will disarm them, as you see. So that's what tail whip does. Now, if I go on heal, she will... Oh crap, she died. She will heal me if I were to take any form of damage. So I'm just going to kill those guys because if I take any form of damage from them, I will be dead. So I'm going to kill those guys. And um, I'm going to bring in... Where is it? I'm going to bring in these butchers. Bring five of those guys. Reduce their enemy level to probably 30. So I'm going to bring them guys out here, have them at 30, take off the invisibility, um, and I'm going to change the posture on my Venari to a heal. So Venari has a heal um, rate or a pulse that if you're around Venari, she will um, continuously heal you. So I'm just going to continue to take my damage here, and as you can see, based on the heal, She's healing me based on me being in the radius. So as you can see. I think I have Arcane Grace on as well. I gotta go and check that. Because I think I have Grace on this setup with my with my Korra. <laughs> um, yeah, I have Arcane Grace. So I'm just gonna go and take that off. Just for the sake of this. As a matter of fact, you know what? I'll take off Guardian as well because, again, it's going to be resisting all that damage. So I'm going to take that off. And I'm just going to go in there just straight like this. So I'm going to have that heal on me. And I'm just going to go base off of the heal. I'm waiting for Fenari to get down here and then I'll just start taking damage and you'll see how, what happens. Oh, God, Fenari. Oh, there, okay, there goes Fenari. So... Now, as you can see, Venari being around me, even though she's in a heal state, she will still attack them. But here's the thing. She will still heal me. So it's not just by having her on heal that is like, oh, she's not going to do anything. She's still healing me and attacking at the same time. She's, so technically, she's doing two things. That's technically what I like about Venari, having her in a heal state, even though attacking... She'll do more damage while attacking, but even in the heal state, Venari will still attack enemies that are trying to hurt me, as you saw. And Venari will heal you and also attack enemies, so that is really nice. And like I said, healing is basically going off of power strength as well. So, last but definitely not least, we have um, Strangle Dome. Now, like I said before, Strangle Dome, and what I also forgot to mention as far as with Strangle Dome is that you could do two casts on it. You could do two casts, so you could have two Strangle Domes out at the same time. So I could have 20 of those guys out there, 
and you'll see what happens once I decide to go in on these dudes. So 20 of those guys there. And as you'll see, they're all being trapped and ensnared and, well, they just flat out died. Um, I'm gonna see. I don't think this even works in here, but I'm gonna do it again. Bring those guys in. And practically, they will die really quickly because, again, they're weak. But these guys over there. Bring them in and they'll die. I'm actually going to run that again, but I'm going to scale their um, their level a bit because they keep dying too damn quick. So, I'm going to have it to like at least 50. I'm going to kill those enemies that are actually there and I'm going to spawn them back again. Um, so, here's the thing. You do this, it brings them in like so. And if I crack whip this dude... These guys take half of the damage that I dealt. I'm going to do it again to show you what I mean. Since he's ensnared, I whip claw him. He dies. He's still taking damage, of course. Whip claw him. He'll be dead. I'm going to do it again. He gets ensnared. Bring him in. Whip claw him. These dudes take percentage of the damage so along with him he's gonna be dead there's nobody else around and technically he walked into that and he flat out killed himself basically on the strangle dome so i have two strangle domes that were that were up that one just went this is about to go out practically let's say your melee does 500 damage all right if i whip claw one dude on a vertices with that 500, whoever is connected to the vertices of your strangle dome will take 250 damage. So, you whip claw right here. If someone else is around or if any other enemies are caught in the strangle dome, they will take half of the damage that you dealt to that enemy. So, that enemy takes 500, the rest take 250. If you deal 1000 damage to this guy here or if he's up here or somewhere, the rest will take 500. Whip Claw synergizes with Ensnare and Strangle Dome. Whip Claw could do damage by itself and it scales off of your combo counter as far as with your melee. That's what it does. So, if I were to bring out these guys yet again, what I would like to do normally is build up my counter like this and then I'll just Whip Claw. So, again, I will be doing double. I'll be doing more damage because I'm going off of my melee. Right? So I could just do that and then whip claw him. So I can keep the combo counter going. Hit him. Whip claw him. These dudes here, I could just whip claw these dudes to death. Whip claw him. Whip claw him. And him. And him. See, radiation popped off right there. That's from my dual carries. So just do that whip claw him and whip claw him so i could just do that keep the combo counter going um let's check and see if there's any more enemies that's technically how i like to use my whip claw i use my whip claw a little bit more than all of her other abilities i'm talking about like strangle dome using venari's thing and whatnot normally i would just have venari on I'll have her on the heal mode and then just use my melee weapon, whip claw them to do more damage and all that stuff. And since it scales, I could just keep whip clawing fools till the end of time, practically going off of my combo counter. Use strangle dome in confined areas. Use strangle, not strangle dome, use ensnare. If I like, if I'm getting swarmed, I could just ensnare somebody and then it'll just do a crowd control effect of bringing enemies in then i could just you know whip claw them so i could do more damage also i think i mentioned it but i don't think i did is that if you have venari out you get a speed boost as you see you you see that um indicator on the top of the screen i'm just switching to jayla because again having two cats out is really nice 
But as far as having Venari out, you will get that speed boost. As you see, you get that 19% speed boost. So that's why Core is running faster than it actually says as far as how fast she is based on sprint speed, as you can see. So Core is actually moving rather quickly than normal because if you look at the description of it, Korra practically has a sprint speed of 1.05. I just had this in their Arm of the Jilly just to speed her up even more. But 105 is a low sprint speed. But with Venari out, it makes it seem like Korra is really, really quick. And technically she is. It's just that Venari gives you that speed boost. But without Venari sprint speed of 1.5 you technically it's like she's only a 0.5 ahead of probably frost or Saren, one of those frames that is like you know have average sprint speed but venari gives you that extra speed boost and that's really nice and also having um where is it having armored agility helps because again cora is really tanky as far as with the armor that she has so you're getting really, a really good benefit as far as taking advantage of her armor. You could put steel fiber on her to make her even more tanky. As far as with how I had my arcanes before, I had arcane guardian on her so that I could stack the armor even more. And I had arcane grace because again, I'm rocking rejuvenation on this setup with Korra. So as you can see, I got Rejuvenation in there. So I'm stacking Rejuvenation with Arcane Grace. And on top of that, I have Venari on the heal mode. So you're talking about a regenerative state where she going to keep regenerating health at a ridiculous rate. To go along with Arcane Grace, how it regens you really quick. Stacking that with Rejuvenation, plus 3 heal rate, and plus Venari's uh, heal rate. As you can see, health a second, you're talking about with my power strength gives it 65. That's a ridiculous um, healing regen. As far as with the setup, as you can see, I got Intensify in there because you don't really need to worry about power strength that much with Korra because, again, she's a CC frame. But the reason why I have power strength in there is because of Whip Claw, Strangle Dome. If enemies keep hanging off, it will still do moderate damage. Um, I got stretch auger reach in there so I could um, pull enemies in once I kill them off of strangle dome enemies that get too close to the strangle dome it will pull them in streamline in there for the efficiency vitality of course for the health prime continuity for the duration you technically need a little bit of everything on Korra to make her effective especially you need the range if you use in strangle dome a lot uh, as far as how she is as a frame in this game compared to how she was when she got first released, we got the better version of Korra on PS4. She is, uh, how do I say this? She is unique in, in a CC kind of way. Strangle Dome, for the most part, is not Vobin's, uh, Bastille. You want to talk about CCing a place, you know, Vobin, Nova, you can even throw Frost in there with, with his snow globe. They control a huge radius compared to Strangle Dome. The reason why Strangle Dome is unique is because you, you're able to grab enemies. And on top of that, it has a ragdoll effect to where if you see early on when I had some enemies ensnared up there, I say in snare, if you see how enemies got strangled dome up there, I'm just going to have myself on invis just for the sake of this. You will notice that other enemies will shoot at guys that are being in, in strangle dome. So I'm just going to have these guys up and you will see what I'm talking about. You see how some guys are shooting at guys that are hanging off like this guy before he just died? They'll have that ragdoll effect to where they will attract other enemies. So they won't be shooting at me. They'll be shooting at them. And as a result, they will die based off the Strangle Dome's damage or by their allies' gunfire. And as you can see, him being pulled in. Um, 
as you can see, he ended up shooting him. And see how I'm just standing in place right here? Whoever's caught in the strangle dome, they will end up shooting them at times. And as you can see right there, some guys, they will end up shooting. See, just like him, he just shot at the guy that was on top right there and he just died. And there he goes, he got pulled and whatnot. I'm just gonna let the strangle dome kill him. Yeah, there you go. So, Strangle Dome is doing a number of things. It only brings them in, but at the same time, it will attract other enemies and they will shoot at that guy. So, it will give you some form of cover, but not a lot. And as a result, you know, you can still do damage, use Whip Claw to do double damage on them, and the rest of the enemies that get caught in the Strangle Dome will take the half of the damage that you dealt. So, all in all, Korra is a unique cc frame with small damage potential whip claw is like her x factor ability as far as it synergizes with most of her kit it synergizes with ensnare it um it synergizes with strangle dome venari is good by herself whip claw is good by itself because it scales off of your melee mod so whip claw can hold its own and it also helps other abilities do what it needs to do so Korra is a unique cc frame with a lot of with a lot of things to to benefit so that's technically core right there